All right, folks, but you can see we are back. We're going to look at some Facebook. Let's head on to case number nine. Sweet revenge. Oh, nobody's here. Perfect. Ace, eager as I am to accompany you to Mr. Alas's next party, I confess to Chocolate Factory is a most unorthodox venue. Willy Wonka's Chocolate Factory. But Mr. Alaster himself is an unusual man. He never attends his own festivities. Or at least, we've not met him yet. However, we have encountered two murders at two consecutive soirees. We have used our choice for to rescue this chocolate extravaganza. But Ace, I didn't realize the factory belongs to the Rochester family. The Rochesters are very prominent in Concordia. Making me uneasy about infiltrating the party under false pretenses, Mr. Del Lobo did an exquisite job of forging these invitations for us, but if one of the Rochesters realizes Wow, that is an amazing costume. Friends, Concordians, Candyman, welcome to the Rochester Chocolates. I am Rockley Rochester, owner of Rochester Chocolates. Prepare yourselves for a feast, for we are the music makers, we are the dreamers of dreams, and today my domain was chosen to host the wildest party you can imagine. Mr. Rochester, thank you for having us, we are. Yes, yes, the pleasure is all mine, I'm sure. Now, I'll take your tickets and you may enter and behold my chocolate river. Good morning again, everyone. Glad to see you all here for Sweet Revenge, Chapter 1. So we obviously have the body, candy bowl, witch's hat, frog, glasses, broken heart. Well, it's like a yellow candy. There it is. Oh, Juicy. Good to see you guys all here. I say, this man is taken to swimming in the chocolate river. Horribly unsanitary. But heavens, you're right. That man does not appear to be swimming, but rather deceased. Furthermore, the man's mouth appears to be overflowing with pink covered chocolates. No doubt the poor fellow didn't do that to himself. I dare say, Ace, it appears this man was force fed chocolate until he choked. Not only do we have another murder, but this makes the third of Mr. Last of Parties where someone has been killed. This cannot be a coincidence. The murder must have be someone at this party right now. Tarnation, Jack Godwin's been overdoing it on the sauce again, I see. I told him there was to be no swim in the river. Wait, Mr. Rochester, this is Jack Good Goodwin, was it? He isn't swimming, he's dead. Oh, Balderdash, Jack can't be dead, not in my factory. We're afraid he is, Mr. Rochester, and because it's your factory, we will need to have a word with you. Hey, I don't know why these sugary segments and that and that bowl of candy have attracted your eye, but if you think we should have a closer look, I shan't argue. Shall we get to work? The last time I had so much candy in my proximity, things did not end well. <laughs> Alright, guys. I will grab a bunch of stars. I'll see you guys right back. It's been Pitching Ace 88. Au revoir. All right, folks, Pitching Ace 88, we are back. Let's, uh, now that we've grabbed some stars, let's talk to this guy. Mr. Rochester, thank you for taking a... I can't believe this is happening here. My factory, what a travesty. Not only did Jack Goodwin have the tree to die here, but he was stuffed to death with my newest specialty chocolate, Pink Alation Sensation. Before I get out of that man I was murdered in my factory, I'll be ruined. Saying Trooper Ace, you must get to the bottom of this quickly. Mr. Rochester, you can tell us of Mr. Goodwin. I must go. I need to drain the river and melt another 10,000 pounds of chocolate. 
He looks like a much younger version of Gene Wilder. Ooh. Is that a diamond I see? Oh. This piece of trash. I got excited. Hey, so the crumpled paper you found in the Captain Candy Bowl unfolds to reveal a message. And look, the message is addressed to the victim. The message reads, Jack, meet me at the production line for a surprise. A valuable clue is, if our victim went to the production room, so must we. Thank you, Marco. Yeah, 10,000 pounds. Holy moly, that's a lot. Um, brother. Arushka. Oh. Ace, that large candy heart has a victim's name on it. And the na name of Arushka appears along him. It seems like the victim must have had an amorous relationship with said Arushka, which means he must have a word with her. It's almost like a Baruka. I think her name's Baruka. Excuse me, miss. Are you Barushka Coldwell, the woman in a relationship with Jack Godwin? Goodwin? Well, you sure know your onions. I'm her. Can we make this snappy, though? The glass is empty. Well, if you so desire, Miss Coldwell, we regret to inform you that Mr. Goodwin has been murdered. Hey, Jackie? My Jackie? He's... he's dead? How is that possible? He was here a minute ago. Well, we understand your grief, but we may need you, you to tell us whatever you can about Mr. Goodwin. Well, Jackie was a fresh fret there. I don't like all those stuffy men around here. So handsome and exciting. Jackie was crazy and loved me. And can you blame him? I'm a choice bit of calico. But that's all over now. That's horrible. I need a drink. Yeah, Faruka. So that's her name, Faruka. I knew it was something like that. I don't know why Baruka solved. Yep. I wish that was Baruka. I don't know why. Moron. Oh my gosh. What does this look like, guys? Tell me what this looks like. I'll give you guys a couple seconds to figure it out. You guys should all know. I mean, it's pretty much a sh only a show that is like one of the most popular shows in England and like worldwide. It's not a Nexus, I mean, it could be C-3PO and R2-D2, but it's a very, very specific from a very popular pop culture show. Yes, it is a, uh, a I want to say Delos, it's not, it's a, a Dalek, a Dalek. Goodness, is that contraption you found is like no other I've seen. Hmm, the Chocolometer... 1,000. I reckon this is one of Rochester's imaginative creations. It's locked with one of those Concordian symbol mechanisms. I propose we decipher the code and see what this apparatus does. And you're right, this book seems to have belonged to our victim. Odd to find it here. Inside the book, there's some faded writing. I imagine we can learn a lot more if we were able to retrieve the text. Thanks, Marco. I appreciate that. Yeah, no, this is a Gaelic. So we have two, six, five, six, five, five, eight, six, two, five. Contraption is alive. 
This machine looks to be part of the production line process. I suppose the mechanical arms serve to help package the chocolates in their bottom. Ace, you're right. There's blood on the mechanical claw. Do you think it could be the victims? Well, let's mix in with some green substance. We must collect a sample. Thanks, Ollie. Been here for a while. Ace, it seems this book was no longer the victims. He gifted it to someone called Archie Rochester. Another Rochester at this party? Not surprising. The factory does belong to the family. The dedication from Mr. Godwin to Archie reads, so you can be more like me. That's a bold wish. My curiosity has peaked as to the identity of this Archie. Ace, let's go find him at once. Viola can be assisted with that blood you gather from the chocolate meter 1000. Let us dispatch this to her. I don't want to find out if we're going to end up getting a new Balumpa. Hey, Mr. Archie Rochester, I'm Detective Von Thames, and this is Senior Trooper Ace. We would like to have a word with you regarding the murder of Jack Goblin. Goodwin. Applesauce. Jack can't be dead. He was my friend. Jack wasn't like the other eggs around here. He didn't care about convention. He was his own man living the life he way, the way he wanted. We found the book he had apparently gifted to you so that you could be more like him. Yeah, most people see me as a rup, but not Jack. He said I was just shy, but with the potential to fly. He was my only friend, senior trooper Ace, and now he's dead. Oh dear, tears. Yes, well... Sweet revenge. Well, someone's got revenge on him. Camtasia Studios. Uh, let's, let's speed both these up. Ace, you're back from the chocolate factory with all the contraptions and chocolate. Is it as wondrous as people say? Why, well, admit, Viola, I am blind to the charms of such a place. It's also very sweet. Why am I not surprised, Isaac? In any case, I have information about the blood substance you got off the chocolate machine. The blood type matches the victims. Does this mean the chocolate meter was involved in the murder? Undoubtedly, given the way the victim was stuffed with chocolates and the blood around his mouth, we can assert that the machine was used to force feed your victim. Oh my word, so the machine was our murder weapon? Technology can be a frightening prospect. Well, this must mean that the victim was in fact killed on the production line. Yes, but while operating the machinery, they killed off behind that green substance you saw mixing with the blood. Identify the traces of sugar, mint, and bourbon, the ingredients of a mint julep. Well, now we know our killer drinks mint julep ace. So let's be on the lookout on one who imbibes minty liberations. Mint libations. Libations. I probably play NBA before I played soccer. Just because soccer, you run a lot. Ace, did you bring back some chocolate? I'm doing research into his curative powers. Apologies, Richard, but our time at the factory has not been gastronomic in nature. Well, the woman in the airship will be disappointed. They'd hope moving the ship close to the factory would show them some sugar sweets. But about your cadaver, the victim was indeed killed by being forced fed chocolate. His esophagus was stuffed full of it. Also, at the time of his death, the victim was quite intoxicated with high doses of cough syrup and champagne. I was surprised the killer didn't just throw him into the river and let him drown on his own. Well, the killer wanted to make certain the victim would die. You see, there were certain sugary ligature marks around his wrist, meaning he'd been tied up. And to force Jack down, the killer leaned on him with their own body pressure in, a, in an effort to subdue him, leaving behind a sinister clue. Sinister being the Latin word for left-handed, left -handed, a physical attribute that a, a, ancients regarded as evil. Some have even gone, gone so far to say left-handed individuals are more inclined to be criminals. All poppycock, of course, with no scientific basis whatsoever, but suffice it to say, the pressure patterns on Jack's body indicate the killer is left-handed. 
Well, at least the killer may be left-handed, but I have no doubt you'll catch them red-handed. So I haven't had a mint julep in a while, but I am left-handed. I could be the murderer. Maybe that's why I was late. Hey, so the chocolate's still flowing for the revelers at Mr. Alaster's party. However, Jack Goodwin's times are over. It appears that someone murdered his this social life by frustrating him chocolate dumping his cadaver in the river. Well, we will surely find the killer among the party guests, for nobody else could have had access to the premises, and this is already the third of Mr. Laster's parties marked by murder. Chocolate Factory itself belongs to the Rochester family, and two of its members are in attendance, and Mr. Archie seems to be grieving for his friend. And Mr. Rockley is certainly quite eccentric, especially by his distinguished family standards, but would he sully his factory's reputation with murder? Well, and of course there's Miss Coldwell. The victim's lady friend, seemingly in love with the man, yet evidently more in love with herself. Ace, pardon my interruption, but I've discovered some startling news. What is it, Miss Holloway? Your victim, Jack Goodwin. He doesn't exist. Oh, uh, what? Alright guys, we'll see you guys in Chapter 2. This has been Pachini 88. Over and out.